Hello, everyone, all my sisters. My name is Denise Cordero, and I am a holistic life coach. You are tuning into Diving Deep with Denise. And mm. this is an amazing sisterhood where we all get to come here, join us to have raw and authentic conversations about all expressions of what it is to be embodied as a woman. And that is walking us through our pain, our struggles, our healing journey, and of course, our triumphs. Now, this happens to be the premiere of Diving Deep. And I did say that I would be introducing a lot of juicy guests, all of them super important, um, amazing, beautiful women, all ages, all different backgrounds, all different professions, all of them in their own right, um, very successful or on their way to success. And um, they're special to me because they have helped me in my journey in some way. And today is no exception. I have Miss Remy Ibrahim. And um, let's, let me give you your proper introduction, love. So wow. Remy Ibrahim is an entrepreneur, writer, and professional astrologer. She has studied astrology for over 30 years and has worked as a professional astrologer for the last decade. She developed the patent-pending proprietary algorithm that has revolutionized the process of writing. For nearly a decade, she has worked with many beginning published and well-known authors on their fiction and nonfiction works. She is the founder and president of Sage Drop Incorporated, a company dedicated to bringing practical solutions to everyday problems. She is currently studying software development in the pursuit of her entrepreneurial goals. Thank wow. you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Yes. You so, look lovely, Denise. Um, so I, I need to highlight the astrologer piece because, girl, Please. you are <laughs> tremendously <laughs> instrumental in me wow. even having this podcast. Wow, so thank you. I, I, I owe um, um, a debt of gratitude for you providing the impetus to get me here, to put myself out there, um, to be myself, and, and to share what I know with the world and to help other women. Because ultimately, that is my, my passion. It is my mission. It is my intention to help um, other women in their in their own journey of healing so mm -hmm. tell me about everything astrology how did you get there how did you land there how did how did i land with um studying astrology yeah well you know the story is actually a very interesting one um i when i was younger i, I want to say maybe 13 14 years old i had a paper route um yeah. in my neighborhood and i would always read in my paper, like my, my face was buried in books the entire time. I'm like flinging the paper to people's, um, you know, front um, porches and stuff. And I remember I went to a guy, uh, one of my, um, one of my routes uh, houses and the man came to the door to, to, for me to get paid. And he said, my wife died, but she left you all her books. And so I was like, oh, she just, she wanted you to have all her books. And I, I was like, feel bad that his wife died. I think that's, you know, that was so sad, but yeah. all the, she gave me boxes and boxes of books in her library and I began to read them. And one of the first books that I pulled out was Linda Goodman's Sun Sign Astrology. And I read about Scorpio, which is what I am and changed my entire life. From that moment, I became more centered in who I was, I started to understand my, my emotions, the way I thought, why I thought it, what was going on. It began my journey. Um, and frankly, everything in that book is everything that I read from that book is everything that I've become <laughs> from those, wow. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like all yeah. my interests came from books that I pulled out of those boxes. Um, and so that's how I started astrology at the age of 14 years old. <laughs> so how did it become your career? How did it become this thing that you did for the past 30 years? 
Yeah, it well, I I just it was the one consistent thing in my life from the very beginning. Um, no matter I was always searching for what my path was. And astrology gives it to you, but there's nothing, especially when you're younger, it's a little bit harder to follow the map. <laughs> yes. You're more always like, well, I'm gonna try this. You're just not settled, right? And but the one thing that I never veered from or never got bored with or always felt like my anchor was the study of astrology. I always, I, like, I couldn't get enough of it. And then, um, what was it? Maybe, uh, I want to say, I, I, I'm trying to remember when I, oh, 19, 2013, I decided I, I created something um, that I ultimately started to, like, I created a, a company out of. And I decided, you know what, it's time. I've read thousands and thousands and thousands of charts, never feeling good enough to get paid for it. Do you know what I mean? So it's always interesting when I see people who've been doing it for a few years <laughs> getting paid for it. And I'm like, wow, it took me like decades to feel this sense of confidence, but also this sense of I'm going to be doing the person that I'm reading for justice. I know my craft and I know the tool. Um, every day is a new learning lesson. Every day, I'm like, that's what that means? Do you know what I mean? You never yeah. finish learning the different nuances of charts and planets and what they're doing. Um, but yeah, that's, that's why I just decided when I left uh, my university job that this is my real purpose. It's what I, I love talking to people and reading for them. And I love telling them what their potential is. I love giving them insight into seeing their own map. And I was like, this is what I want to do for the rest. It's what I've been doing since for like a decade into my life. Yes. <laughs> you know, and it's what I want to be doing for the rest of my day. So, so that's how I fell into it. No, it's amazing. I know yeah. that, um, I stumbled upon astrology many years ago when I started my own healing journey and spiritual path about 10 years ago. And I you took learned, a class with me. Yes, I did. Yes, yeah. I did. Yes, yeah. I did. So prior fun. to that, I had learned with another astrologer. Her name is Heather Ensworth. Um, and um, astrology just became this. Um, you know, this thing, this interwoven piece into my healing journey and everything that I was doing, um, even so landing with my life coaching. So mm -hmm. anytime that I take on a client um, in my coaching, I'm always asking them what's their birthday, what's their birthplace, what their birth time is, and I'm looking right. at their chart. I almost feel that I'm not doing them any justice if oh I'm God. not looking at this piece. If I, I almost it's feel like it's negligent. It's like it's like I'm like poking at some, you know, I'm like trying to yes. find a hole in the dark or trying to find oh something God. in the dark. It just makes no sense whatsoever. I'm so glad you say that because I almost feel that if you treat the lives of others, the welfare of others, to not look at their map that gives you their design and un allows you to understand what is it they came here to accomplish is negligent. So I just, I love that you just said that. Well, thank you for saying that. For our viewers that have, you know, um, never studied astrology like we have or never used it or has just looked at their horoscope on the back of a Vogue magazine or something like that and doesn't, can you give us an appreciation and an understanding of what is the difference between astrology and your horoscope? And yeah. why is this so important? If you've never had your birth chart read, why do you need to go out and have it? Why is this so important and so integral to your life? Um, well, I think a lot of people equate astrology with psychic things. Okay. And I'm a, I'm a scientist by training, also by nature, but I'm also a deep spiritualist. And I don't necessarily believe the two are exclusive. I believe science and spirituality are partners. And mm -hmm. to 
leave one or the other in whatever field you're in is only working with one side of a coin. Yes. And for me, astrology matches or marries those two things where there is a scientific basis for why astrology works and what it is. And there's also a spiritual basis that is involved that involves your intuition and an understanding of deeper knowledge of physics, quantum mechanics, science, but also philosophy, um, psychology, and just really understanding the nature of human beings and how things move. And I think one of the reasons why astrology is so important and is so different than, I called it pop astrology. And I don't want to <laughs> put anybody down because I know that I keep, maybe I keep sounding like this, but it has its place and it's fun, right? Pop astrology is a very fun thing, but only paying attention to prop astrology and thinking that that is a measure of the, in the entirety of who you are is like only really looking at one aspect of your psyche. Um, your psyche is full of many archetypes um, and many aspects of its nature. There, there are parts of your psyche that deals with love. There are parts of your psyche that deals with communication, that deals with information, that deals with a lot of different things. And astrology is actually a way, it's a map that reads how your psyche maneuvers its way in the reality, in the, re in the real world, in the material world. It, is, it gives the language that allows you to be able to understand how do you, what is your patterns? What is your ways? How, do you, how are you in alignment or in misalignment with nature? That's what astrology gives a language to. Yeah. And I didn't invent this language, this language was created literally from the first man um, and, and women that populated this planet when they looked at the sky and they said, the sun will come out tomorrow. <laughs> I don't mean to follow, you know, the movie, <laughs> but to say the sun will come out tomorrow, then that means you're an astrologer. That is astrology. Astrology yes uses the planetary motions to understand the patterns of everyday existence. So that's why I think, that's where I think it's very different. It's complex, it's four dimensional, it's deep. There is no end to the, I call it the well with no end. It just, no matter what you're seeking and what you're searching inside yourself, you look into the well of your astrology chart and you will find the answers for it. And, um, and I think we're just beginning to really understand how deep that is for each of us. Um, and that's what I think is the difference between, you know, just reading your horoscope <laughs> and truly understanding what astrology does for man, you know, for humanity and for the self. Thank you so much for explaining it so eloquently. And I, I just like, I can sense and I can feel your passion for this yes. work in yes. what you say. <laughs> now, I also know that you can use astrology for different things. It's not just about your birth chart or your transits, that you can actually use this tool um, mm -hmm. for larger things and for meanings of, of, of other things, like what is going on in the world right now. And I would be remiss if I didn't have a conversation with you and get your point of view as to what is going on in the world today because holy <laughs> f there is shit going there's shit going on right now okay i there mean a lot of changes from a sure. you know from a health pandemic perspective yeah. from a political perspective from a black lives matter perspective and let's face it you're a black girl. I'm a brown girl. Yeah. Okay. This is affecting <laughs> all of us. That's right. What can you tell us from that, from that lens um, of what is occurring? What is occurring and what can we expect about, you know, just this tumult that's going on in the world? Yeah. Well, it's we can, ex we can expect deep transformative, transformative changes um, that will change all our lives forever in the next decade. 
Yes. And when I've been, so you had mentioned earlier that everything has, everything is, astrology is more than just for the natal chart, which is the chart of the person, right? Yes. Um, astrology could also be used, uh, every, everything that has a beginning and an end has an astrology chart, everything. The lamp that's lighting <laughs> my way right now has an astrology chart of its life's purpose and what it's meant to do and all those things um, based on when it was built or when it was put out. Um, nations, people have an astrology chart. Why? Because it's all about our psyche. Yeah. And we have an individual psyche. We have a collective psyche. Everything is living and everything is living within this data grid of information. And what astrology is, is how our psyche interacts with that data grid of information. Okay. So United States has a chart. It's based on um, July 4th, which is, its birthday is tomorrow. Happy birthday, America. Yes. Yes. I'm a big fan of this country. Um, I know it's got a lot of issues, but I also know its potential and its chart. So I root for it all the time because I think its potential is good for mankind. It's still young. A lot of people don't realize young. we are yeah, a young it's, country. We are a young it's nation. literally two and a half years old. Yes. <laughs> Compared to other countries that have that I have that have sustained for centuries and centuries and eons. It's two and a half years old. Yes. So it, you know, the promise of what this country has, we've yet to see, but according to the chart that I see of it now, I'm a big fan. Um, uh, so according to it, July 4th, 1776 at 5, 10 PM is the chart that we use, that I'm using. I'm, different people use different ones, but that's the chart that in my research, I've seen triggers that happen to the United States that, tr that are triggered in the chart as well. And the United States has a lot of growing pains that it's going through. Before Donald Trump elected, was elected, yes. I remember speaking to a friend of mine and looking at that, it was about to begin at Sadi Sati. And you know the Sadi Sati. Would you like to explain the Sadi Sati a little bit to people? Please, or? Please, please, no, please, you explain. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. The Sadi Sati is a seven year period where Saturn transits the moon of our chart, anybody's chart. And Saturn is the disciplinarian, but it's also, it's also the one that forces us to become more, in, to live in integrity of ourselves. Yes. And in a country's chart, the moon is its people. And any time that Saturn starts to make a move towards the moon, well, it starts to challenge that moon and says, are you in your absolute integrity? And the way it does it is that it takes away from you everything that feels comfortable. Yes. And when I saw this before Donald Trump's election, I remember telling my friend Sin that I'm like, the United States is about to go through some shit. Excuse my language. It is. <laughs> Oh yeah, we're <laughs> neck deep in it right by now. Yeah. I, I didn't. I like. I didn't think it would. Like I like everybody else. When Donald Trump was running, I was like, "There's no way." <laughs> like even though I know I knew the United States was about to go through some difficulty in its chart, there was no way. I I, I thought this country vibrated at a higher level than that. I was wrong. Yeah. And. We have the PTSD to prove it. <laughs> we have, oh, we don't even know what PTSD is yet, okay? <laughs> I was very wrong about the vibrational level we were vibrating on um, in the sense that we needed Donald Trump. And that's how I feel about it is I never look at anything as why me? Why am I suffering? Why is this happening to me? To me, triggers, transits, and things that happen within the chart that forces friction is the opportunity for us to elevate our vibration and to an shift. opportunity for us to grow and shift. Yes. Ultimately, it is our psyche who picked Donald Trump. It is not yeah. some foreign thing. The collective psyche says we need evolution. And the only way this evolution was going to happen was by giving us something so corrosive and so um, integral in mirroring who we are truly inside still. Yes. That when we see it in front of us, we're like, that is ugly. Yeah. 
And it's really and playing out in so many ways. So many atmospheres, like yes. all the dirt and corruption that is corroding the foundation of the country is being pulled out, which is what, as you know, Pluto does, and Pluto's in Capricorn, um, is being pulled out um, and shown to us so we can weed it out and clear it before it destroys the foundation of the country. And that's what's happening. Yeah. So we're not living in a horror world where it's never gonna end. When we are done with Donald Trump, Donald Trump would be out of office. When we as a collective, our psyche feels it has purged its poison, Donald Trump will be out of office. Until then, he will be there because that's what we, ch we are the ones who have the choice, not Donald Trump. And that's what people need to understand. The more you change for the better, the more you evolve ourselves collectively, the better the choices we make, the better the lives we lead. That's it. And that's what's going on astrologically. And do I blame think, the outer planets. Sorry, Remy. Do you think, yeah, right. do you think we're, do you think we're there yet? Are we getting there yet? Because as I'm seeing things unfold, yeah. my first reaction, this is Rodney King all over again. Yeah. You know, this is, um, there's and going to, to be a lot life. of noise, you know, yeah. there's going to be a lot of noise about it. And then it's going to be swept under the rug like it didn't happen. And yeah. then it will happen again. And another yeah. life will be lost. And another, you know, and another, you know, and I will say corrupt police officer will get away with it because not all our law enforcement is corrupt. Yeah, of um, course not. Just like not all anybody of any group. Correct. Are corrupt, right. Exactly. There's good and bad in everywhere, but we still have to hold people accountable. Um, do you think we're there yet? Are we really ready to, are we really ready for the rep, you know, the reparations and the restitution and to um, no. really be anti-racist? No. And not because I don't think we don't have the potential to be. It is the yes. promise of this country to do that, exactly what you just said. That is yes. its future. But it took the way that I always like to describe things to people is just imagine yourself. If you grew up in a dysfunctional, um, abusive childhood, how long does it take you to get over it? A whole lifetime. A whole lifetime. A whole and a lifetime, lifetime for a country is very different than a lifetime for an individual, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> First, yes. For, for 400 years, people have been separated and one made to think it was superior and the other made to think it was a piece of shit. Yes. And because human beings inherently are compassionate, people are starting to realize the errors of our ancestors, right? And as well as the struggles of our, ancestor, of our ancestors. And they want to make amends. But if you look at the individual, sometimes you take one step forward and a hundred steps back. But eventually your steps forward will overcome your steps backward. And I think it's important for people to understand it's not going to be all of us, you know, just because people, it was a bunch of white people protesting, that doesn't tell me things have changed. It just tells me now you're aware I'm no longer a liar for telling you before shit was wrong. <laughs> yes. Now you are now seeing it because Pluto forced you to see it. And that's what happened. Pluto represents viruses and coronavirus is one of the things that I think has forced people to stop doing everything they're doing. And everybody was focusing on one thing and they watched it every day on TV. And to me, I think one of the things that I personally believe, because it bristled me when I saw it, was the Armard, the Aubrey shooting. When I saw that, I was just like, holy shit, we're monsters. 
And I think if I thought that, and I'm black, <laughs> I can't imagine what somebody who's white, who's denied the obvious, what everybody else has seen, said, thought to themselves like, I mean, they shot that little boy that was just going for a jog down like he was, you wouldn't even do it to an, I wouldn't even want it done to an animal. Yeah. And the way I think I'm still, I feel like I need therapy just for that particular shooting. And I think that that was really the beginning. And then the Floyd just tipped it over the edge for people where it's like, oh, what, we're the monsters. It's not them out there because we're all connected. Um, so I think that that's what's, that's, it's just the beginning. Just like Me Too movement is just the beginning. Do you think men are not going to start opening up boardrooms for women? Yeah. <laughs> just because Me Too happened? No. Yeah, not likely. No, no. The fight, awareness is just the first step. Yeah. Um, the real battle is then a lifetime of checking yourself every moment for your thoughts, deeds, and actions. And, and I think that that's, that's what I really feel about it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. So when you are doing a reading on someone, how do you prepare yeah. for that? Like, where, where does your mind go? What, what is oh, a, that's interesting. You know, that's a very good question. Yes. Because you have <laughs> such a unique style and you yeah. talked a lot about, you know, the science of astrology, yeah. but there's also an art to it. Yeah. And um, I'm an artist. That's for sure. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and most, and most of my art comes in my foul language. <laughs> <laughs> Say it like it is. <laughs> Listen, I just, I'm very expressive. <laughs> yes. No, I'm good. I'm like that. Yeah. I'm like, look, we need to say fuck for emphasis sometimes. Yes. Okay? Yes. Yes. I certainly do. So yes. <laughs> if you are faint of heart, I'm probably not the best astrology for, astrologer for you. Yes. Um, but uh, I like to tell the truth. Um, and I'm not saying like, other astrologers don't tell the truth, but I'm almost too blunt in a way sometimes. Um, but the, the thing that I think is most important to me is kindness. Um, it's important for me to have empathy towards, you know, just because this is what I think you should be doing doesn't mean I don't understand the struggle you're going through to do it. So I yeah. could have information for you, but that information is going to be given to you in a way that is hopeful. Um, because I feel that hope really is what get what makes the sun come out tomorrow, right? What gets you up in the morning the next day? And without it, it doesn't matter what your potential is. If you're struggling um, and you don't have any hope, well, what the what good is anything, right? So being hopeful is a way that I like to do a reading. Now, when you're talking about how I prepare, well, my preparation was 30 years in the making. Yeah. In that everybody that I had ever met since I was 14 years old, I'll be like, what's your chart? <laughs> and I would just start studying their chart and I would start reading things to them. Is that true? Is that not true? To understand what is what beyond just what I'm reading online, but what I'm experiencing, how I see that energy expressed through this person and an energy like a Venus in Sagittarius we have very common things in common because I have Venus and Sagittarius and with a lot of people who have it, we would have a lot of things in common, but the way we express it will be based on the level of our vibration, how high or how low we are on that vibrational level will be the way we express it. We could become philosophers or we could become playboys. It's, it's about where you are at. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I, I remember reading when they're like Venus and Sagittarius, can't be faithful. I was like, hmm, that's not true. I'm like strictly monogamous. Do you know what I mean? But because of the way that I, I'm also a Scorpio, so, but the way that I express the energy is very different than just the standard. Um, so for me, my preparation is that I have been studying it <laughs> for many, many decades before I took on the challenge 
of helping people to map out their future, their, 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 you know what I mean? Their chart. And so to me, it's, when I look at a chart, it becomes, it's like gossip magazine. <laughs> <laughs> That's different. <laughs> That's quite different. <laughs> It's like, ooh, ooh, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Having that yeah. curiosity that, it's, oh my God, very, like, yes, it's so happening? tantalizing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That's it. That's how I feel. And I think part of the reason why I'm able to see the chart like that is because of how I read it for so many different diverse people that I've seen how it plays out. I have their stories in my mind of this is, all the ways this can go, right? So when I look at a chart, I'm like, well, when I see this with this and this is doing this with this, it's usually this, not this. So I'm able to be a little bit more accurate with how I say it to people where it fits who the person is because one chart can represent 5,000 people because 5,000 kids were born around that time and then exactly. on that location with the same chart. But exactly. how it gets expressed is dependent on their psyche and how their psyche utilizes the energy. And you're able, I'm now able, you know, they say mastery, well, maybe I say, but I tend to feel that when you master something, you stop the roteness of it, like where it becomes second nature, that's intuition. Yes. Mastery turns into intuition. You no longer have to be like, what is that saying? You just feel it it becomes attuned to your own energy. And every time I look at a chart, immediately the picture raises up from, from the chart and it becomes a person where I'm seeing their life play out right in front of me. And, and that's, it's, and it's fun for me because it feels like, I mean, listen, it's obviously not a gossip magazine. <laughs> well, but let I me do love that. It's fun. <laughs> receiving it from you and yeah. as you know for people that have never experienced having a reading from you i have to share because i've <laughs> had readings from different astrologers and they all have their spin and they all have their different take on it and i can liken it to, i i, I want to compare it to that the two more dominant styles that i find are um the very kind of basic this is what it says to the kind of esoteric type yes. of interpretation it's not my and, favorite type and and it's like okay <laughs> you you kind of you know read between the lines of what i'm trying to say type of thing and then yeah. there's a third and i think that third is quite unique and this is the way remy reads your chart and there's <laughs> nothing like it there is nothing like it and it is truthful and it is raw and it is authentic and it is um, filled with so much hope um, and compassion. And I've always felt when you do my readings that I'm being held. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I'm being taught something. Like wow. I'm learning something about myself. Mm -hmm. um, and... I'm also gaining validation where I may have doubt or I'm not sure. And it does feel somewhat of a predictive tool, not mm -hmm. a psychic type of thing, but mm -hmm. of a foreshadowing of mm -hmm. what could be, what could yes. be. And I think that... And, and, and there's a lot of wonderful astrologers out there, and I'm not going to knock their work. But I think that when we as coaches, mentors, healers, astrologers don't provide that, you know, we have the know-how to be able to um, be able to like peer into this is what it looks like when I'm looking into your window. When mm -hmm. you don't provide that to the person that comes to seek help from you, that is such a disservice yeah. because we're <clears throat> all searching. We yeah. all need answers to those questions, you yeah. know? And um, 
And I find that this is, this is part of our mission. This is part of what we do. This is how we are helping others in reaching yeah. their potential, in reaching their highest self. And so, you know, I, I come back again to something as simple yet not simple, important of having this, you know, starting this podcast. You know, I came to you recently feeling like I was stuck and I'm like, I'm not moving. I'm not moving. I'm not going anywhere. I know I feel that I am meant to do something more. I just don't know when am I being a scaredy cat? Uh, you know, um, is, is it not the right timing? Cause you got to think about right timing, right? Mm -hmm. Right opportunity, <clears throat> right timing type of things. And you're like, no, it's the right timing. It's you being a scaredy cat. Like get your ass going. <laughs> And I'm like, thank you. Yes, like yeah. I needed that. I yeah. needed that. And 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 here I am. And, and here, here I you am. are, so about to embark you. on this beautiful journey. Well, thank you for you know um, being a good friend over the years and just being a wonderful person. Thank you. And and like a wise person, you know, I respect I respect you a lot, and um, I respect your viewpoint. Thank you so much. Yeah. So I want to shift you for a second, because after all, this is diving deep with Denise. Uh, so Ooh, if we yeah. haven't dived any deep by now, we're going to do some more. <laughs> and I, I like to call this the deep five, the deep five. Oh, I love so, it. Okay. Yeah. So what is a life lesson that you have had to learn the hard way? Oh, that's easy. I don't know shit. <laughs> That's a good one. That is a good one. Shit. And that's it. Um, that is, and it's not even, listen, we all learn that lesson in our 30s, especially. Like, you know, your 20s, you think you know everything. Okay, um, yeah. And then in your 30s, you're like, <laughs> oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> and then in your 40s, you're like, you know what? I'm fine being an idiot. Um, but, and I can still be successful and confident and, and a whole person, right? But I think for me, um, I think from the time I was a little girl, there's always been, I follow, I have strong spiritual guides that they're like, take a left. I take a left. And then I'm like, oh shit, I should, I'm glad I didn't look because if I had the minute, the second that they needed me to move, I didn't have a, a second to spare. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. So in that sense, I've always given the credit to a lot of my knowledge and internal knowings to my guides, not to myself. But there is a lot of you that just thinks you have, you know what the hell anything is about. And I think I've just come to this place where I've, I've relegated myself to just a soul trying to grow itself so that when it leaves, it gains something. That's it. Whether before it's like, I'm gonna work hard and be successful and do all of that. Sure, I'm gonna do all of that. But if it doesn't happen, I no longer have an attachment to it. And I think that, and, to, and the audacity to think you're in control and you have all the information and you know exactly what anything is about is the one thing that I've surrendered. Because I'm like, I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. And I don't wanna be miserable when that change comes because I'm attached to something that never was real to begin with. So I'm just going to surrender, have fun, keep doing me, and adapt. That's huge. Yeah. That's huge. I yeah, think that I, I remember, I, I think that I recall a time, probably in my late 30s or mid to late 30s, where I had a, what I call this existential crisis, because I thought that I was going to reach a certain point in my life where I would have everything figured out. And I'm oh. like... I don't know shit. I still don't have it figured out. Like, what the fuck? What just happened? Yeah. I'm like, do yeah, I still yeah. got to keep on trying to figure it out? Come on. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The, the closest feeling I've ever had to that was when I first left college and I studied biology and I remember going out trying to get a job and people were like, so what are your skills? I was like, what do you mean? I just got a degree. <laughs> They're like, what are your skills? I'm like, skills? <laughs> What are those? 
<laughs> and summarily got a tech job before I went to grad school. Do you know what I mean? Like you don't all the way, every time you think you have something, you have nothing. And, and I've come to understand, like you have to sit comfortably in just taking everything in as a lesson, trying to learn and gain as much from it as possible and just keep moving forward. And that's it. And, and, and stop feeling sorry for yourself that's because beautiful. it's not about that. Um, it's not about that. And, and I'm not saying, you know, it's not terrible when terrible things happen to people and the trauma yeah. that they have to walk with. So I, I understand that and I, and I feel for that, but you then pick yourself up. Keep on going. Keep and keep moving. on going. That's it. Keep it moving. Mm -hmm. So um, what is the hardest thing you ever had to do in life and how did you overcome it? forgiveness yeah. I'm still overcoming <laughs> forgiveness That's a tough one. yeah um forgiving you know I had a tough childhood and it's and, and you know a lot of people say this and you're like yeah 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 thanks for the lip service but you don't know my pain yeah but the forgiveness that I have given to certain people in my life has freed me and if, and as a Scorpio, holding on to shit, <laughs> you know, you hold on to pain and you, and, and you revel in it and you're like, this is what makes me feel alive, but it doesn't, it's what's killing you slowly, you know? Um, and I hate so, to see what your closet you know, looks like. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You have no idea. Uh, it's stuffed with stuff. Um, <laughs> right um but yeah no it's it's forgiveness i think and it's it sounds basic but it's that basic yeah so yeah yeah thank you yeah what legacy do you want people to remember you for i want people there's one that um Anyone who's had an interaction with me, listen, I don't believe in making everybody happy. <laughs> I don't. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm pissed off, I've pissed off a lot of people. And I'll be honest with you, if I feel that when, I, when I've done things that I feel that I did wrong, I have, I have apologized or I do apologize or when given the opportunity, I will apologize because I believe in owning your shit. But I don't expect everybody to love me, right? But what I do want is everybody to know that I treated them with kindness. And that's really it. That's, I don't care if I invented something. I don't care if, I don't care if I made billions of dollars. When I die, if people are saying she was the kindest person I've ever met, that's what I came here for. Because I think kindness beautiful. is everything and empathy. <clears throat> so beautiful. So, so, yeah, that's it. That's so nice. <laughs> what is your favorite motivational quote? Oh, um, oh, it's interesting. I was walking yesterday and this quote kept coming up over and over in my head, which means my guides are like, you're going to need this for tomorrow. <laughs> there you because go. I, I love this quote and it's condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance. It's by Albert Einstein. Good one. Yeah. He's a favorite of mine. He's, uh, he's, he's, you know, <laughs> he's a smart guy. <laughs> yes, he but is. Condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance. And I'm not sure if that's Truly. motivational, but it's Truly. one that motivates me to be a better person um, in all aspects of life in the sense that, you know, you, your first instinct is to be like, no, I don't believe that. I don't want to believe it. Yeah. Non-judgment too. Non, it's, it's really, that's what it is, isn't it? Yeah. That's what it, that's in its essence, yeah. what it says. Yes. Thank you. Because you don't know. So, right. You don't know. That's true. 
we don't know or we don't know the whole story right we don't know the whole story and that's okay. and that's it yeah. so last one but favorite is <laughs> what one thing do you want to share with our audience with women with all of us with the community wow. with a sisterhood what's one takeaway you want us to have it's really simple and that is you do you and the reason why i say that is in my experience reading for people the one thing that everybody has in common is i don't think i should be doing that because and it's like because of what well because my mom told me i couldn't because this person made me feel like a piece of shit one day because the world tells me i can't because 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 well what the fuck are you doing here then why are you here if, that's powerful why are you here that's super if, powerful because of this person so you're here because of that person or society's rules or this no you came here to do your work and what i always tell people is there's a difference between fear and intuition a lot of people confuse the two fear is when you're like i don't i don't think i should do that and it's based on fear that's not intuition because they think it's their intuition telling them not to do it you need to learn to distinguish the difference most of the time 99.9 .9 of the time your intuition is dead on when it says do this you feel it you know it you know it follow it even if you think you're going to fail because failure is the goal yeah failure is the goal success is not the goal failure is the goal so you need to at all cost do you do what it is your in intuition guides you towards without fear of repercussions thank you i think that's so and amazing I'm not, and so and powerful. i'm not talking about murder by the way <laughs> no murder yeah no murder yeah it's so important <laughs> though because um that's so important and it's such a powerful message for me and for us for all of our viewers for all of our sisterhood in our community because i think that some of us feel like it's almost like we need permission to do yes. us this we need that's permission right. <clears throat> you don't um, need permission or we have been taught to we have been conditioned to be such a rule follower that we don't realize that you get to choose if you want to break the rule you get to choose if you don't want to do that like it's you, scary you get to choose to speak up and say something if this doesn't fit right with you you yes. you get you get to do that and a lot of people yeah i didn't i didn't know that i could do that well hell yeah yeah, yeah. but what makes you think that you like and that's the part that is so sad is how abused have you been yeah. by society? Because that's the only thing I can think of it as is abuse. Like people who feel limited to take steps are people who are brainwashed and conditioned. Yes. Um, you know, the, the thing that I always tell people is you, people have to think you're a little bit crazy <laughs> in order for you to be free and be a little bit crazy let allow people to think you're a little bit crazy so you can be free yeah. that's it yeah thank you so much Anytime. thank you thank this has you. been this is definitely going deep for sure this has been wonderful thank you for having me yes thank you for being with me and being a part of this and this will not be the end we will continue hope to have you back talk about some more juicy stuff maybe get into mm -mm -mm. some of your writing Ooh. <laughs> well listen all right hey we're constantly bright. evolving and growing and doing different things we got to share sure. that no for sure listen um the future is is the future is bright and um you will be a a, a good stop and ground for sure thank you thank <laughs> yeah. you 
Well, thank you to all the viewers. Um, thank you for being here and tuning in, watching, listening, whether you're on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, or the notes. Check out the notes in the full bio on Remy and learn more about her or get a reading by her on my website, denisecordero.com. Love you. Take care. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.